Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Behind me, 2007 Toyota Avalon, we're gonna be replacing the spark plugs. The front three, super easy to get to, but the back three, we have to pull the intake manifold. So, let's get started. Let's start by knocking out the front three. You're gonna need a 10 mil socket to pull off our coils. Our electrical connectors come off, there's just a pinch tab. Sometimes they don't lift high enough, so you just get a flathead screwdriver and pop up on the other end just to get it up and over that little piece, just like that. Now these little tabs do tend to break. If it does on yours, don't worry about it, it'll be okay. These two are already broken from past repairs. We'll just pop those off. These will slide up. May need to give them a little twist. There we go. I often get asked if you should replace the coils when you're replacing the plugs. My recommendation is Toyota coils are very strong coils. They last a very long time. If you are going to replace the coils, I recommend sticking with Toyota, not going with a cheaper aftermarket brand. That being said, you do not need to replace the coils every time you replace the spark plugs. Reinstalling your old coils back on is perfectly fine. To pull the plugs out, it's a 5 8 socket. The plugs you're using should be NGK Iridium, either NGK or Denso, one of those brands. That's the OEM factory brand for this vehicle. Using anti-seize is a personal choice. Aluminum heads don't always need anti-seize. The manufacturer does not specify whether to use it or not. I like using it, but it's up to you. Hand thread them in all the way. And then we'll get a torque. These are 13 foot-pounds. They have a washer that will crush. So crush it until it bottoms out. Boom. And we'll just do that with all of them. Our coils, just on the boot, we'll put a little bit of lubricant. This is a silicone paste, dielectric grease works just the same. And we just wanna get it inside the boot. That helps it slide over the spark plug. Let me show you. So it'll slide over the outside of the spark plug easier and then come off easier. We'll just pop that in, do that to the others. Doesn't take a whole lot, just to enough to give it a little lubricant. Put our bolts back in. Plug it in. That is it. That is the procedure. So now all we have to do to the back is gain access to them. Once we have access, we'll do it the exact same way we did the front. To get to the back spark plugs, we have to pull the intake manifold. In order to pull the intake manifold, we have to pull our wipers and our cowl here. It's not as intimidating as it looks. Just a few bolts. Our wipers are a 14 millimeter. Those will come off. Pull this little rubber away. There's another rubber on the other side. Pull this up. There we go. Now this piece and our wiper motor will all come out as one assembly. We'll pull off our electrical connector. Should just be a pinch tab in the back. With a pair of pliers, we'll pinch our little harness connector and push it through. And then we'll pop this off here. There we go. There, now that's out of the way. Now we have a 14 millimeter on our strut. We wanna get both of them off on either side. And then the rest are 10 millimeter bolts. I lied. This does have to come out because there's a bolt underneath it. It's a series of 10 millimeter bolts. There's two here and two on the other end. And it should lift up and out. Now there's a series of 10 millimeter bolts. Once those are all out, this whole thing will lift up. All right, I think that's it. There we go, not too bad. Now that gives us plenty of room to work with. Since you're already over here, we'll start on this corner. Pull off our air box, there's some hoses over here. That comes off there. This comes off for our mass airflow sensor. Got another hose here, a little connector there. This can come off up here, a little hose. Perfect, and then it's a 10 millimeter for our clamp. Once the clamp is loose, this whole thing should come out. There we go. We do not have to pull any of this off, I don't think, because all we're doing is getting our intake manifold over out of the way. We don't have to remove it completely from the vehicle. So I think all this stuff can stay. Maybe our PCV hose up here can come off. 
but I think that's it. All these little hoses and connectors will just bend with it. Holding our intake manifold down is two 10 millimeter bolts and four five millimeter Allen. Hold on to the bolt as it comes up so it doesn't drop down. Now right next to the throttle body, there's a 12 millimeter bolt holding a bracket on to the valve cover. We'll go ahead and pull that. Should be it, this should pop up. Okay, what am I stuck on? Is there another bracket? So there is one more bracket. You see this piece here? It's right behind it. You can feel a bracket there, 12 millimeter. I thought there were brackets and I wasn't sure, and now I'm sure. Okay, there we go. Up and over. That's pretty much all we have to do. We can just suspend this with a bungee cord or something just to keep it out of the way. There we go. Let me show you where the plugs are because you won't be able to see from this angle. All right, there's your ignition coils, one, two, and three, just like we did the front. Pull the electrical connectors off, pull out our coils, remove the spark plugs, anti-seize, put them back in, lube up the coil boots, put those on, bolt them down, and then we'll bolt everything back together. Before we get too crazy, we'll stuff a couple of rags in our intake ports. We'll wipe them clean real quick. Another question I get asked often is should the intake manifold gaskets be replaced? That all depends on how they look. These are reusable rubber gaskets. So if they still look good, they still have a lot of malleability to them, they protrude above the channel that they're set in, then you should be perfectly fine reusing them. But if they look old, they look brittle, or they're squished flat, then we'll wanna go ahead and replace them. If you need a little more room, you can remove the bolt holding down this harness. I'm gonna disconnect the fuel injector connectors. I think that'll give me a little more slack. We can push this harness down and out of the way. So I have two extensions, both three inch extensions. The first one goes in, and then the second one goes in, and that allows me to break it free. Then when it comes out, I take that top three inch off, and then now it's allowed to come out. Little anti-seize on the threads, and put them back in. All right, plug them back in. We'll set our harness where it needs to go. Perfect, we'll plug in our injectors before we forget. Bolt down our harness again. All right, that's it. Let's double check. Now there is a harness bracket right here. This wasn't bolted on, but it looks like maybe a 10 millimeter. So it could be another additional 10 millimeter on your intake manifold. This one was just unbolted laying there from whoever was in here last, so no big deal. Just be aware that there may be one more fastener that you guys have that I don't. All right, let's pull our rags out. Lay our manifold back down. We're not gonna tighten these yet. We're just gonna thread them in. I'm gonna move you guys out of the way so I can get this bracket on and then the other bracket on the other side as well. Put this one back in. With these unbolted up front, we can move the manifold as needed so we can find that hole for the bolt. Let's do this side. Okay, this side was easy. Put on our electrical connector here. There we go. And I think that buttons up this side. Tighten this down back here. All right, now let's bolt our manifold down. Got our two nuts. Just be careful putting them back on so they don't drop. Perfect. Now these are about 89 inch pounds. We'll start in the center and work our way out. All right, perfect. Now let's put our box back on. Tighten up our boot. Just snug and that to be too tight. These style of clamps, if you do it too tight, it can actually cut the boot. Okay, we'll plug this in, like that, like that. And we'll lock it down. And we have all our hoses to put back on. Two hoses here, one hose here. Is that it? Oh, we got our PCV hose. Okay, I wanna say that's it. Let's go ahead and start it up.
Okay, now that we know that it starts, life is good. Let's go ahead and put our cowl back together. Just gonna slide it in. Our 14 millimeter bolts are torqued to 36 foot pounds. Put in our wiper motor. Plug it in. Put our plastic piece back on. And there are clips that go under the windshield. And there's little clips on the front that it falls into. Nice. We got our rubber pieces. Those pop in like that. Okay. Do the same over here. We can put our wipers back on. All right, we'll shut the hood and make sure that the wipers swing properly. And that's it. Repair complete. All right, there you go. That's how you can place spark plugs on a Toyota Avalon. Overall, not too challenging. Getting to those back three plugs is a little extra work, but not the worst. Getting that harness back there unbolted so you can move it out of the way, flex it out of the way, that's the ticket. Otherwise, you can't get those coils out. Also, I used a two-piece extension. Really, you can use a two-piece extension like I did or get a universal or a flex joint adapter and that can go on and accomplish pretty much the same thing I did, maybe even a little easier. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.